Hello, my friend. I'm uh, still not home, so it's kind of, uh, once again, with this um, crummy little camera, but that's all right. It's uh, still getting God's word out there, and that's the most important thing. Man, what a um, last few days I've had. Uh, a lot of problems with the truck transmission quitting on me uh, when I was out in the country and limping the truck back in first gear alone. That's all it would work, first and reverse. And got it to a shop, and uh, they charged me $130 after telling me that they would fix transmissions and they knew how to do it. Looked at it, paid them $130 for the diagnostic check, only to tell me it's the transmission and we don't do that kind of work. I was a little shop in Valley Springs in Calaveras County called Fix It. F-I-X-I-T. They fixed it all right. They fixed it so that they took $130 away from me. And I'm on a, as I explained to fix it, I'm on a fixed income. And that's a big hit for me. Might not sound like much to them, but to me, that's a big hit. And I paid them $130. And, and even when I re said, I called special and asked, do you work on for sure on transmissions? I don't want to spend uh, money on a diagnostic check just to be told exactly what they told me today. So um, it's going to be winding. Uh, it's it costing me $5,500 to get the transmission fixed, and I just flat don't have it. I'm going to have to use my credit cards. Two of them are going to max them out. That was my day. Uh, not at Fix It, by the way, at another place in Valley Springs that I had uh, heard great things about from many different people called Lalo's, L-A-L-L-O, apostrophe S. So that's where I went, and I'm glad I did. Um, it was a very expensive lesson to never go to get anything fixed at Fix It. So there you go. Do what you will with that information, Valley Springs, Calaveras County. Uh, today is Mark 7, Mark chapter 7. Since I just put a business on blast, <laughs> I don't know how fitting it is to go right into reading God's word, but that's what just happened. So I wanted to, you know me, I share everything with you. I tell you everything. Okay, my friend, here we go. Uh, but first, Father, please help these people with this business, which is a fairly new business. Help them to, I, I can't vouch for their work. I don't know. They haven't done anything work, any work for me other than to change the oil. And I pray that they did that correctly. But Lord, I pray that you will I don't know, uh, not let people get ripped off like that again. Not by that store, any place like that. For somebody like me, who knows what I'm talking about with vehicles, to be so taken advantage of like that, I can only imagine what they do to people who they consider to be easy targets. Maybe they consider me an easy target because you know, I wasn't yelling and screaming. And Father, please forgive me if I handle that poorly. I don't believe I did, though. I paid the money. But I know you'll take care of me. You always do. I know you'll take care of me. And my vehicles. Oh, Father. Thank you for this time, and please bless it. And give us your Holy Spirit so we can understand what you want us to know about you. Open our hearts and our minds, our ears and our eyes to you right now. In your name, King Yeshua, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Mark chapter 7. The Pharisees and some of the... Let me turn that off right now. The Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered around him when they had... Uh, when they had come from Jerusalem... Well, excuse me. The Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered around him when they had come from Jerusalem and had seen that some of his disciples were eating their bread with impure hands, that is, unwashed. 
For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. Traditions of the elders. Again, traditions of men. That means it's not in Scripture. They just invented it. And just one more thing to heap on people, unless you do this exactly as we say, and because we're smarter and better than you, and 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 God likes us more. Um, unless you do it exactly like we do, you're ostracized. You're out. You don't get to come to the temple. You don't get to hang out. You don't get to invite it to the cool parties. It's all about being ostracized. I know a lot about that. Um, coming from a uh, parent who belongs to a cult that will disfellowship you. If you dare to question, hey, wait a minute, that's not in scripture, or hey, wait a minute, that's not what that verse meant. You took it out of context. Oh, how dare you? You're a, what are the, the, um, they don't call them elders, they don't call them pastors, they call them overseers. I was 13 years old asking questions. 13. And he called me apostate. Uh, so I know what it's like to be ostracized, kicked out of the club. You don't get to play with all your friends and everybody that you know, unless you do exactly what we say. Why? Did God say so? No, man-based. Verse 4, and when they had, um, oh no, oh no. My scripture suddenly went away. Oh no. It says, oops, something went wrong. What happened? Seriously, what happened? I don't know what to do here. This is what it's showing me on the phone. Oops, something went wrong. Send diagnostics. So I, I said, okay, sent, just so I was hoping it would go back to whatever it was. It says successfully sent, but it doesn't say anything about how to go back, and it won't let me know. Oh, this is terrible. My apologies. <laughs> now it's back. I, I closed the app, opened it back up, and there it is. Whew. Anyway, let's pick it up where we left off. Verse 4. And when they came for the marketplace, uh, they do not. Actually, we're going back a little bit. Uh, verse five, uh, three. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. And when they come for the marketplace, they do not eat unless they cleanse themselves. And there are many other things which they have received in order to observe, such as the washing of cups and pitchers and copper pots. The Pharisees and the scribes asked him, capital H, asked Jesus, why do your disciples, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with impure hands? And he said to them, quote, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. <laughs> he didn't even bother explaining. He just goes, yep, that's right. Isaiah said that you'd be here and look at you. Here you are. I'm sure he said it in love, though. <laughs> I hear that so much. Oh, well, you know, if you... If you call somebody out on, on going against God's word, you have to say it in love. Like Jesus did, you mean? When he called them whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones? That kind of love? Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, Christians. Oh, my. We've gotten so soft and weak. It's just horrible. I was just thinking about it today. I'm stunned at how weak we've gotten. There's no strength and conviction. There's all just follow the world and everything's feel good and kumbaya. Hold hands and turn on K-Love and listen to the music that some of it is just so going against God. It doesn't matter. On my Facebook page, I just posted something about that on the uh, Charlie Simons page uh, about my time in Christian radio and what I discovered with the music. 
So anyway, as I was saying, uh, rightly did Isaiah, or Jesus was saying, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the, re uh, the precepts of men. That's what I was talking about, unquote. Nope, still, sorry, still quoting. Neglecting the commandment of God, who hold on to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or his mother, whatever I have, that would help you, is, is uh, korban. That is to say, given to God. You no longer permit him to do anything for his father or his mother, thus invalidating the word of God by your tradition, which you have handed down. And you do many things such as that, unquote. Think they freaked out a little bit about that? <laughs> Mark doesn't bother covering that, though. Uh, verse 14, after he called the crowd to him again, he began saying, to him, he's like, you're dismissed. I just told you off. Calling the crowd to him again, he began saying to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside the man which can defile him if it goes into him. But the things which proceed out of the man are what defile the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, Oh my gosh, excuse me. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples questioned him about the parable. I'm like, a parable? And he said to them, are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him because it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach and is eliminated? Thus he declared all foods clean. Right there. That's in parentheses thus he declared all foods clean verse 20 and he was saying that which proceeds out of the man that is what defiles the man for from within out of the heart of men proceed the evil thoughts fornications thefts murders adulteries deeds of coveting and wickedness as well as deceit sexuality envy slander pride and foolishness all these evil things proceed from within and defile the man Unquote. Jesus got up and went away from there to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted no one to know of it, yet he could not escape notice. But after hearing of him, a woman whose little daughter had had an unclean spirit immediately came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of the Syrophoenician race. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs, unquote. But she answered and said to him, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, because of this answer, go, the demon has gone out of your daughter, unquote. And going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed and the demon having left. Again, he went out from the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty, and they implored him to lay his hands on him or to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting... He touched his tongue with the saliva and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to him, Epaph, uh, Epaph, Epaph, <laughs> Epahatha. That is to be opened. I don't even know how to say that. E P H P H A T H A. Epaphatha. And his ears were open. Verse 35. That's the most important thing. His ears were open and the impediment of his tongue was removed and he began speaking plainly. And he gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. 
They were utter, utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. You know, so um, funny, uh, all the different ways that Jesus healed people, that which is chronicled in Scripture. And I, I think it's John who wrote that there wouldn't be enough books to fill all the things that he did during his just a short three-year ministry. Um but the ones, the ones that are chronicled, the healings that are chronicled, everyone's different. Everyone's different. And there's no Benny Hinn kind of crap slain in the spirit, waving his powerful, mighty little uh, Benny Hinn hand over the crowd and people just falling down, all healed. It's not like that in Scripture. Every single, I mean, look at this. Why, why did he do that? Put his fingers in his ears, spit and touch his tongue, the man's tongue with the, with the saliva that he just spit out. <laughs> why? Yeah, that's how he chose to do it that time. But it, they're all different. They're all different. That's just so fascinating to me. Hmm. That's Mark chapter 7. Go back and read it for yourself. I'm sorry about the, excuse me, about my Bible app suddenly having a problem. I've never encountered that before, and this is, I've been real happy with this app. And if you need something on your device, it's called Literal Word, L-I-T-E-R-A-L, -E Literal Word, and it's free. It's the New American Standard Translation, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the closest you can get to the original scrolls and tablets. Uh, I've got an early morning, and it's late now, and um, so I'm signing off. But go back and read that for yourself, please, Mark 7. It'll help you remember it. Talk to you later.